switch mode power supplies are operating the transistor either in on mode, that is when the gate source voltage is far beyond the threshold voltage, or in off mode, that is when the gate source voltage is zero. Now during the on mode, the transistor is still within its linear operating range, but we are trying to minimize the resistance between trade and source or maximize the conductivity of the transistor as a switch. One widely used switch mod power supply is a buck converter. The converter consists of a power MOSFET controlled by its gate source voltage, which are pulses, for example, from a pulse width modulation circuit, a power diode, an inductor, and an output capacitor. The aim is to convert the DC input voltage into the DC output voltage that the load requires. Switch mod power supplies can be operated at efficiencies far beyond 90%. Therefore, they often don't require any heat sinks, but they need the inductors and the capacitors, which are bouncing the energy back and forth between each other, so the converter is actually converting the energy stored in the magnetic field of the inductor into energy stored in the electrical field of the capacitor and recycles that energy back into the inductor unless it is needed by the load and in that case it provides it to the output. But the process of balancing the energy back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor is nearly lossless. Now during the on time of the switch, that is between zero and the so-called duty cycle times the period time t, the power transistor is ideally a short, has no voltage across it, and conducts the full inductor current, which provides current to the output capacitor and supplies the load with the required DC current. And the return path closes the loop through the input voltage source. In this case, we have the full input voltage across the diode, but no current through it. As there is no voltage and current simultaneously in both of the power devices, so in this case, the switch is only conducting the current, but has no voltage across it, whereas the diode has all the voltage across it, but no current through it, that means we have no losses in those components. Furthermore, we learned previously that inductors and capacitors only can store energy, but they are not dissipating any energy. So basically those four components are lossless. During the on state of the switch, the circuit diagram when modeling the switch as a short and the diode as an open turns into a second order low pass where the buck converter is modeled here in the orange box. During the off time of the switch, that means after the duty cycle times the period time t and all the way up until we are repeating the operation at the period time t, the switch is off and that means the inductor current, which cannot jump, is still providing current to the output capacitor and the load and the return current forces the diode to conduct and closes the circuit. So in this case we have the full input voltage across the switch up here but no voltage across the diode as it is ideally a short circuit but the diode on the other hand is taking over all the inductor current. As we basically have an open circuit here from the switch, we can model the equivalent diagram here as an open. And now the diode is ideally a short, which pulls the left hand side of the inductor towards ground. Note that we keep the direction of the inductor current flowing from its left node to the right node, and therefore here from the lower end of the diagram upwards. The capacitor and the resistor are basically hardwired 
to the inductor and to each other. And therefore, the equivalent circuit diagram in that operation does not change. Now, by looking at the average voltage across the inductor and the average current through the capacitor, which both need to be zero, as we cannot have a DC voltage across an inductor or a DC current through a capacitor, we can derive the basic DC transfer function which is the output voltage divided by the input voltage of a buck converter, and find out that this is actually the duty cycle. The average output current in that case is equal to the, the average inductor current. As the duty cycle is going between 0 and 100%, that means 0% the transistor is never on, or 100% the transistor is on all the time, or anywhere in between, which can be regulated by a pulse width modulator, we can actually scale the output voltage as we need as a function of the input voltage. But the output voltage cannot get any lower than zero volts, which is equivalent to the duty cycle of 0%, and it cannot exceed the input voltage, which we reach at a duty cycle of 100%.